Hello, friends, and welcome to the Wisdom for Life broadcast. This is Pastor Glenn with another episode that we hope will bless you. Hey, would you turn in your Bibles to Genesis? Let's see, chapter, let's look at chapter 39, verse 2. Then we're going to look at verse 20, uh, 21 as well. 20 and 21. This is the story of Joseph. I hope it's very familiar to you. I will be doing some exposition of this story, but I'm not going to cover the entirety of it because the, the story itself covers many, many chapters. We'd be here for a long time and I would miss lunch. So we're just going to, we're going to cover the highlights of it, but I want to talk to you a little bit, especially tonight as we talk about leverage and how God leverages faith in our life. I want to talk to you about what to do when you have dreams in low places. Can you still dream in low places? You know that song. I got a dream in low places. You never heard that song? No, and it's where the Spirit flows. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? And then he chases my blues away, right? And I'll be okay. Come on, that's how it goes in my mind, right? I want to show you something here about that's very, it, it, just, this is so awesome that Joseph dreams, not just in high places, but in low places. This is what the devil wants you to believe. The devil wants you to believe that God is only the God of the mountaintops. But the greatest miracles, the, the most exciting, powerful moments that God does in our lives are really in the valleys. They're in the low places. And many times we look at low places and we say, you know, how can God be in this? But if you'll just keep dreaming, if you'll just, it, listen, if you'll just put the divine dream on one end of the teeter-totter, it will outweigh the despondency, the despair. It will out way the dilemma on the other side your god has birthed a dream in you and if your god says it it will come to pass in the name of jesus christ come on give him praise all right I, I, i'll give you an example of what i mean i gotta get this somebody gave me a big candy bar today keep it up church keep it up keep it up genesis 39 2 the lord was what with joseph Sometimes, we, you know, we get so busy looking at the what that is going on in our life and the circumstances that are going on in our life, we forget about who is with us. I want to tell you this morning, who is with you is greater than what you're going through. <laughs> and listen, you ain't coming out of it, you're going through it. But who is with you, let me tell you, is more powerful than what you're going through. And so don't ask the question what, don't ask the question why. We get this a lot in church. We come into church and we go, why is this happening to me? The question isn't, why is it happening to you? The question should be, who is with me? Look, look at this. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Can I just let you in on what his name means in Hebrew? His name in Hebrew means increase. Write that down. You're going to write that down. Come on, give me a James Brown amen. That's not James Brown. I want to show you that he prospered in every place, not just the heights, but also the depths. You've got to learn that God is going to bless you no matter where you are. Because it's about a who, not a what. You say, who, 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 what is now in this place? The who is Jesus, and he's with you. Didn't the Lord promise that the Lord will always be, be with you and never forsake you? Okay, okay. Look at this. It says, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered while he was living in the house of the Egyptian master. He is a slave, but still increasing. He's at a low place, but he's still prospering. <laughs> Jump on down to Genesis, because there's a theme here. And by the way, I want to tell you this. Moses wrote this. This is called the Torah. This is, this is perhaps the longest story in the Torah. Moses picked out this story of Joseph because it is 
inside a story behind the story. It is the story of redemption of all mankind. And Moses is like, I got to get this. I got to make sure you get this part. So I'm going to devote more chapters to this than any, any other. Look, look at this, Genesis 39, 20. But while Joseph was there in prison, you, you all remember why he went to prison, right? Because somebody thought he was hot to trot. You don't know what that is. You've been saved your whole life. I know. Somebody thought he was all that in a bag of chips. Somebody thought he is handsome. He's a good looking boy. While he's there as a slave and a servant in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife got the eye for him. And if you remember, she offered him to sleep with her. Now, this is out of the Bible. Don't get mad at me. But I love what he does. He runs. Listen, guys, let me just tell you. Here's what you do when you're faced with that kind of temptation. You run your booty off. Three amens. Okay. I got counseling for the rest of you. We'll schedule you all week, man. Next week, following week, run. You don't hang out and go, well, let me think about this. Now, now, should I or shouldn't I? <laughs> no. Get out of there. Beat feet. Come on now. He runs. Now, now what happens is he gets thrown in prison. Do you think, do you think Potiphar believes his wife? No. Because if he believed his wife, he'd have killed him. He, he knew better. Potiphar was seeing what kind of a character this young man had. And so he says, listen, I got to, and listen, you, sometimes you're in a rock and a hard place, especially with your wife. I'm not going to fight with her, but I don't know what to do with you. So I put you in prison so that I don't have to fight with her. And I can't kill you because you, I know you didn't do it, kid. You know, so this is what he does. And he ends up in prison. But watch this. It says this. The Lord was with him. And his story is a story of low places. And I just want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about dreaming in low places. I want to talk to you about the seesaw of life. I want to talk to you about the teeter-totter. Because if there's anybody in this room that would stand up and testify and say, Pastor, my whole life has been a series of ups. I'd call an altar call right now and get you up here for liars. You lay your tongue on the altar. You know that ain't true. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. And if you're in a down, this too shall pass. If you're in an up, sorry to break it to you. I'm not giving you the blue light special on the gospel. I'm going to tell you the truth. You'll have a down again. But the Lord is with you. That's what counts. It's not your circumstances. What counts is, is the Lord is with you. Now I'm going to, I'm going to ask my, my sweet little wife. She doesn't really know how this is going to work today, but in fact, I hope that I'll survive after today. But I'm going to ask my sweet little wife to come on over here. We're going to, we're, we got a teeter totter in here today. Isn't this cool? It's awesome. It, uh, here, I'll help you, honey. Now, whatever you do, we're, we're about the same weight, right? Did I do that? We're not. Okay. So what, whatever I'm going to do, I'm much, 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 much heavier than you. As I backpedal, yeah. Whatever I do, I don't want to launch you off this thing, okay? Because I need you. I need to eat, okay? So if you want to sit down, oh, okay, good. All right, I want to talk to you about the teeter. Are you okay? You don't look okay. I don't know if I, oh, oh, just hold on, baby. Hold on, okay? <laughs> Are you going to be all right? It's just a te okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, just don't, don't. Beat me up with it. All right, now. Oh, <laughs> just go all the way down, babe, okay? We didn't practice this, okay? It's going to be all right. Just, oh, whew. all right. Welcome to my life. You don't stop that. All right. I got a job to do. Do we want to get paid? All right, we got to eat. All right, here's the deal. Joseph has a dream. But before he has a dream, he has a big old up moment. His daddy, Jacob, loves him more than all the other brothers. Isn't that awesome? Say up. That's an up moment. Thank you. 
All right, so then he has a dream. And the dream is all about how his brothers and the rest of his family has two dreams about how they're going to bow before him. One is about sheaves, and the other one is about uh, the stars in the sky and the sun and the moon all bow to him. And that's another up moment. Say up. Okay, baby, that's enough. (laughs) All right, so. But his brothers come along, and his brothers don't like it at all. His brothers are upset at him, and they hate him. How many of you know that's a down moment? Say down. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, my legs are giving out. Everybody give Sarah a hand. (laughs) There you go. <laughs> Love you, baby. I just, I got to get back to the gym. Sorry, the illustration would have went better if I'd worked out. Okay, so, so he has this, he has this, this dream. They hate him for it. And that's a down moment, but he has another down moment. How many of you know what they do next? They throw him in a cistern or a well, right? That's another down moment, isn't it? And then after they throw him in a well, they bring his, coat of many colors back to his daddy with blood all over it. Now don't you, don't you for a second, don't you for a second get to the place where you think this doesn't have to do with Jesus. Because it does. It does. He brings the coat back and it's got blood all over it. Daddy thinks his son is dead. His favorite son is dead. That's another down moment. And then what happens next is he's pulled out of that cistern. That's an up moment, isn't it? But When he's pulled out, he's sold off as a slave. That's another down moment. Anybody seen a pattern here? Anybody seen the teeter-totter of life? The seesaw of life? He gets sold off as a slave, but ends up in Potiphar's house. Potiphar is a very important dude, and he has access to Pharaoh. That's an up moment. But while he's in Potiphar's house, what happens? He gets accused of sleeping with Potiphar's wife. That's a down moment. And then Potiphar throws him in a dungeon, in a prison. That's another down moment. And while he's there, though, he starts interpreting dreams. And you remember those dreams, don't you? One of them had to do with the cupbearer. The cupbearer has this dream, and he sees this this, uh, this tree with three branches, or this vine with three branches. And he sees the grapes are squeezed out of the... Uh, the, the oil, sorry. The wine is squeezed out of the grapes into a cup and it's brought to Pharaoh. And he interprets that dream and he gets it right. The cupbearer has three more days to live. That's another up moment, isn't it? And then what happens next is is, is the the baker comes along. The baker's dream isn't so good. How many of you know that uh, you can have up moments, but sometimes even in up moments, you better tell the truth? If God's called you to preach, you better tell the truth. That's the problem today. When we preach the gospel, we don't preach anything about the fact that Jesus saved us from hell. Right? And without the law, we wouldn't know what we need saving for. And so we're just telling people to get saved. Saved from what? From what? Saved from your own sins. Saved from hell. So he tells the baker, you know, you've got three stacks of bread on top of your head. Well, in three days, you're going to die. It happened. He tells the cupbearer, though, when you get back to Pharaoh, because those three those three branches represent in three days, you'll be working for Pharaoh again. When you get back to work for Pharaoh, you remember me and you tell Pharaoh that I'm here and that I interpret dreams. Did the cupbearer do that? Nope, that's a down moment. In fact, it's two more years, say two more years. Then Pharaoh starts having dreams. And you remember, he sees uh, seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. And that represents a time in Egypt of famine and also a time in Egypt of of plenty. And so when he interprets that dream correctly, guess what? He has a huge up moment. Now he's made second ruler in the land. Now he's able to be in charge of all the resources. Not just for himself, listen to me, but for all the people that would go hungry and be starving. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Now he has the truth. Now everybody's got to come to Egypt and come before him in order to get bread because for seven years they store it up and the other seven years, there isn't plenty. Can I just preach for a moment? 
if, if you're someone that thinks that the way circumstances need to be in our environment, in our culture and country, if you're someone that thinks they always need to be up, you need to be put on notice that sometimes God allows things economically to happen to a land so that His truth and His blessing will be heard. You, you, so don't look at the down moment, even in an economy. And listen, I don't want to, I don't want to alarm you, but we're probably due for one. These things called recessions come, right? And so we've had this up, 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 up. And then a, a little, a little bump in the road comes and everybody's like chicken little. The sky is falling. No, that is the perfect time for revival. More people get saved at that point than any other point. Will God sustain you through it? Yes, He will. Will God make sure that you're ready for it? Yes, He will. And the whole world will say, what is it about you? You're blessed. I'm not. I need the truth. So that's why God allows these ups and downs in circumstances, in culture and society. So all of them have to come before Joseph. And here is the key moment. I, I, I just want to connect it here a little bit because in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, all of his brothers now come before him. All of his brothers now see that they need this bread, but they don't understand who it is they're, they're sitting in front of. They're bowing now in front of him. And, 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 but, but I want you to see, I want you to see what Joseph sees in Genesis 50, verse 20. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, to the saving of a few lives. How, what? To the saving of many lives. In other words, God had a plan. And His plan was bigger, for, bigger than any of us could see in the moment. And God gave me these dreams and I just kept on dreaming. I kept on believing. And it all was about right now. Now, can I talk about the seesaw? When Joseph first seen his dream he came out to his brothers and he said look at me look at me look you're all gonna bow before me look i'm almost gonna fall down you uh look you're all gonna you, listen this dream is all about me in other words see me but in genesis chapter 50 the bible says just before that he saw his brothers and that this was the reason why this happened to him. You see, your dream has to move from see to, come on, come on, saw. Kind of cute, isn't it? You got to admit, that's not too bad. I buttered the bread a little bit on that one. See, God is going to give you a dream. He has plans for you, purposes, and pursuits. But in the process of being gifted by the Lord, we go through what's something, I, I, I call it inflation. We move from inspiration to inflation. First, we're inspired by the dream that God gives us. We go, wow, me? Really? You picked me? You want me to do what? I'll never forget the time that, that God called me and said, you're going to pastor. And I'm going to, what? What? Me? Inspiration. Your, your purpose now moves beyond your past. And now you start to see that God can do something bigger with your life than you ever thought was possible. But the problem with, with inspiration is it soon turns to inflation. And we just get prideful. We just blow up, don't we? Oh, I know you don't. I know, I know you don't. You don't at all. You, you can handle it. I did. I thought, wait a minute here. This is pretty cool. God picked me. Did he pick you? <laughs> I'm all right. You know, you don't say it, but it starts to come into your heart a little bit. And, and you, you know why that is? Because you're, you're gifted, but you don't have character to meet your gifting. See, your gifting will take you places your character won't keep you. And until you have the correct character, you won't stay where God's called you. You need both. You don't just need one. It's not see me. It's, I saw that this is all about others. So you need character in the process. So you go through this inspiration, then you move on to inflation, 
But then God takes you through tribulation. And you wonder why that happens. In that moment, you're thinking, wait a minute, didn't you pick me, God? God, didn't you, didn't you, weren't you the one that picked me? I thought you called me. Listen, I want to tell you something this morning. And I may have said it before, but just bear with me, okay? I don't, I don't like to hear from anybody who doesn't have a story of pain. Show me your scars. Show me your scars. Not, not literally, but I want to, not here. Not in the notes. Sorry, Sarah. Okay. I don't want to follow any scar-free person. I want to be with somebody who's been through it. Who has a story and a testimony or a test inside their testimony and, and a struggle inside their sermon. If you don't have any scars, listen, the reason why I follow Jesus, you ever wonder this? Think about this for a minute. When, when Jesus showed up in the glorified body, he still had scars. What's he doing in a glorified body showing people scars? Shouldn't that be perfect? And yet God is saying, listen, I have a purpose for scars. If you have no story of tribulation, then you've never been through a test and you don't have a testimony if you don't have a test. And you probably don't have the character to match your gifting. So you end up being in places where people go, you know, you're pretty good at that. And then you go, instead of giving glory to God and say, well, it's all God anyway, you go, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I, I, I am all right. And then everybody hurts. Everybody hurts. So Joseph goes through this period of time called tribulation. And I want to talk to you about how that works. Because every dream, I'm going to break it down into three parts here for your notes. Every dream has these three parts. Are you with me? I don't believe you. Are you with me this morning? It's not rhetorical. Are you with me this morning? Okay. Every dream has a death, burial, and then a resurrection. I said every dream has a death and a burial, but also a resurrection. Your marriage may have experienced a death and a burial, but Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. Listen, your finances, your job may have had a death and a burial. Sunday's coming. Hey, listen, you've got to get through Friday in Golgotha to get to, to get to the resurrection in the tomb. Come on now. You, you, th there's something in the way and it's called tribulation, but it's not, oh, it's not all about that. It ain't over. God's got something more. There's a death, burial, and resurrection to every dream. It's happened in my life. There have been times in ministry, and this I'm going off the I'm going off the pages here. There have been times in ministry where I went and taught high school. You want to know why? Because I couldn't stand being a preacher anymore. Now you say, what in the world? Why wouldn't you like that? I'm going to go eat my candy bar now. We'll see you later. Because I had died, and I was buried, and I didn't believe anymore. The dream that God had put in my heart. Now, if I can be that transparent, can you? Because if you've never been there, I want to tell you, if you've never been there, you will. But I want to tell you, there's hope. Listen, God was with Joseph in every down place. God was with him. And his name meant increase. He continued to prosper, even though he was down. I'll never forget the day. Listen, I'll tell you, it happened to me recently, man. I had three staff members in a row that committed moral failures. I had a staff of ten and three of them, boom, 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 had moral failures. And I had a nervous breakdown. You hear the crickets now, can't we? And it knocked the wind out of me. It just did. And I went off the radar for a while. How many of you know that's okay? It's okay to be dead. It's okay to be buried. Stay with me, because resurrection's coming. So I'm having a great old time, and then you guys call. <laughs> well, let's go, honey. <laughs> you know? You know what I told a friend yesterday? I wish to God he would have blessed me 
with this church 10 years ago so that I could spend 25 and 30 years of my life with this kind of people. I'm just, I, that's how I feel. I mean that. But, but listen, you had to go through some stuff too. And so did I. But resurrection's coming. Don't get so focused on the death season or the burial season that you miss the fact that it's just three days to get to the resurrection. Joseph was buried. He died. You know, the, the, the testimony back to his father, Jacob, was he's dead. See his robe? They smeared goat's blood all over his robe. Boy, I can take you into Le Leviticus and tell you how all, what all that means. Well, we don't have time. But let me just tell you this. His father in that moment believed his son was dead. How many of you know there was a heavenly father that looked down and seen his son was dead? And how he must have felt. And then later he's buried. He's thrown into a cistern. You think that he's rescued and it's over. It ain't over till a big lady sings. <laughs> I'm scoring points today. He's buried. But you think he's getting out of it because now he's working for Potiphar. But Potiphar's wife! And he's thrown down again into a dungeon. The resurrection's coming. And now he becomes, he, he gets a gold chain put around his neck, and now he's second ruler in the land. Do you think this has something to do with the promise of God to Abraham that I'll bless all nations through you? Don't you think that God could have caused a famine just in Egypt and not in Canaan where his family was? Why do you think that God caused Joseph and his family to increase in Egypt? Because the Egyptians needed to know who the one true God was. Don't you know your God is a good God? You sang it today. Don't you know that your God wants the whole world to know of His goodness? Don't you see these stories in the Old Testament where He's picking people like Rahab? He's picking people like Nebuchadnezzar? He's picking these people out and He's saying, here's my goodness, and they become believers? They grow in the midst of what was then the chaos of the world. And they have a testimony. There'll be Egyptians in heaven. You see? And you, you, you wonder why God stuck you here. Or in that factory. You wonder why God stuck you in this church. I could go to a better church. Really? As soon as you get there, it'd be worse. With that attitude. See, I fixed it. I, I, see, Frida, I know. I'm about to get it. Well, I'm just going to find a better place to be. I'm going to find the perfect church. You'll ruin it when you get there. If there is one, there ain't one. Except heaven. And you got to die to get to that. Right? Unless you're raptured. So I want you to see, God promised Abraham, He says, I'm going to bless all nations through you. And then we just, a couple of generations later, and now we see the nation of Egypt being blessed by someone who represents Christ. Increase. Didn't Jesus say, I give you increase? He did. He said, the thief has come for no other reason but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, I love that but, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly he is the god of increase and when his people increase in a foreign land the foreigners that are starving go hey what, what is it what, 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 what's about that what's going on with your god can i have that i want some of that you ever you ever, you ever smell some baked cookies and you say i want some of that there is an aroma that comes from the blessing in the presence of god and it surrounds you people want that and so this is why god allows it to happen so that he can reach lots of people J uh, jacob comes at the end in a caravan and he sees that his whole entire family now is blessed because of this dreamer that would not stop dreaming even in low places he wouldn't stop he wouldn't stop believing his god and now the the whole then known world would be blessed because somebody kept dreaming until resurrection 
I got so much I want, more I want to teach today. I, okay, I'll teach you one more thing. No, it's got to be. Okay, can you give me a little time? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I, I, I want to talk about why God puts you in the presence of weirdos. Weirdos. I want to talk about that, okay? Why weirdos? Why, why weirdos? Okay? Listen, listen, the slave traders were weirdos. But, but, but listen, for, when you have a dream, for you to get to your, de- from your dream to your destiny, so it's not a dream anymore, now you realize it. For you to move from one side to the other, you have to walk through doors. There is a door, and behind that door is another blessing, and then there's another door. And then behind that door is another blessing. Are you with me? All right. So, so you can go through life with a crowbar or a key. These doors are locked until you get it. And the lesson to be repeated till it's learned. Who wrote that down? You want to go through doors or not? The lesson to be repeated until it's learned. So you don't get to go through the next door of your destiny until you find key people. There's key people to every door. The slave traders were key people. They were weirdos. But if you read the story of Joseph, he treated them well. He loved on them. He cared for them, even though they were jerks to him. They brought him to the next door of his destiny. And if you, if you look at the next people that come along, listen, it's Potiphar. Potiphar is a key person. He opens doors because now he has access to Pharaoh. But Potiphar was a jerk too. God, why do you keep bringing me into the presence of weirdos? Because these weirdos are key people. God wants them to know the truth, but he also wants to get you from A to B. And there's going to be key people. Who's the next one? Well, we get past that and we get it. There's a weirdo called a a cupbearer and another weirdo called a baker. And man, they are big time weirdos. And they totally forget about Joseph, even though, even though he helps them out. Totally forget about him. He's left there in that prison for two years. But the Bible not once says that he gets all depressed, busted and disgusted, complaining. Do you know there's not one verse of scripture that says Joseph complained? And what do we do? As soon as we get in the presence of a jerk, we go, oh, <laughs> used to be a cartoon. Old man would walk around with like this, uh, this like redneck country hat. He's like, <laughs> as soon as something goes wrong, as soon as somebody takes that parking space, <laughs> you don't know that's a key moment. You don't know that maybe you take the next parking space and you get out and they get out and they see the graciousness of your God through you and now you're telling them about Jesus. So if you can turn your human and humana, humana, and humana into... <laughs> you know. Turn it into that. Love. He said, he ends up in Potiphar's house. He's a weirdo. He ends up, he ends up with the baker and the cupbearer. They're weirdos. Then he ends up with Pharaoh. Let me teach you this. There are key people and then there are hinge people. The heaviest of doors swing on tiny hinges. Are you listening? Even when you go to the bank, you'll see a big vault. You'll see a big fat door. It's, it, it requires a key or it requires a combination to get in. But that huge two ton, five ton vault swings on head, on little tiny little hinges. Don't go thinking a hinge person's a big deal. They're not. The door is a big deal, not the hinge. The the door is the big deal. Jesus said, I am the door. See, between you, your dream, and your destiny, there's lots of places you're going to meet Jesus. And it swings on these little itty-bitty hinges. Don't go thinking, oh, you're Pharaoh. You're the big deal. You're not the big deal. The big deal is the big man. The big man's the door, not you. You're a hinge person. But you can go through life with a crowbar or a key. You can be frustrated. You can be angry. You can be mad. Why won't somebody give me my day? Why won't somebody help me get to where I'm supposed to be? Don't they know God called me? Don't they know what God has said? And they keep treating me like a jerk. And every one of those people are key people. 
Because even Pharaoh was a hench person or a key person that brought Joseph to a place where now he could share the gospel with all the people of Egypt and his own brothers. You say, Pastor, how could the gospel be there? Oh, 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 oh. let me tell you. You see, Joseph was loved by his father. So was Jesus. So was Jesus. But yet he was rejected by his brothers. So was Jesus. Jesus said, I am rejected by my own, my brothers. When he said that of, of the Jews, he had a robe. So did Jesus. If you remember, they gambled for it at the cross. They took his, they took his clothes and his robe. They gambled for it. Do you think there was any blood on it? <laughs> both went into a pit. One a cistern, another one a tomb or a grave. But both went down. Both were sold for pieces of silver. Joseph for 20 pieces, Jesus for 30. Both were placed under great temptation, but did not sin. Both told the truth. Even the baker needed to know the truth. You think it's a big deal that he died in three days. It's even a bigger deal if he wouldn't have heard the gospel and the truth of the one true God before he died after three days. Anybody with me? Both went to Egypt. If you know the story of Jesus when he was born, you remember they took a census and then Mary and Joseph got out of there on a really quick camel. Both went to Egypt but were later discovered alive. Both were crowned and exalted. Both used their positions, not for revenge, but for forgiveness and love. All the knees bowed before Joseph. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess before Jesus Christ that He is Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. The whole gospel's there. Okay, I'll land the plane here. We get to the New Testament. And we just blow right on pie names, but I'm not going to let you do that because names preach in the Bible. In the New Testament, we meet another Joseph. This time, he's from Arimathea. <laughs> You're like, I don't get the connection. Step inside to my weird little mind. His name's Joseph. What does that mean? Increase. Very good. He's from Arimathea. Arimathea means high place. <laughs> what am I talking about here, church? What am I talking about? Joseph had a low place, though, called his tomb. Now, 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 now listen. You know he loaned it out. He didn't give it to Jesus because he believed Jesus. Jesus said something about that he would raise again. He didn't give it to him. He loaned it to him. The Bible says he loaned it to Jesus. How many of you know when you loan something, it, 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 it's, it's just, it's not given. You'll get it back, right? The way he got it back, though, was pretty cool. He loans it to Jesus. He, he, he puts it on loan. He says, Jesus, here's my low place. Be Jesus in my low place. My name means increase. I'm from a high place, but I've got a low place too. And Jesus, I need you to be in my low place. My low place. <laughs> so he gives it, gives it on loan. Now let me tell you this morning, you loan your golf club, you maybe loan your car, maybe, maybe, maybe loan your car. Maybe you loan a little money, maybe not even that. But there's some things you just don't loan. You don't loan your grave unless you believe the one that's going in there is coming out. <laughs> Come on, you don't do that unless you know what he said is true. Unless you know resurrection means get up. Resurrection means up. Unless you know that in your low place, God's going to get up. How many of you want to, how many of you want to just hear it right now? Here it is. Here it is. Okay. When you're down to nothing, God's up to something. Ha <laughs> ha. Jesus was my dream. I've seen Him heal people. I've seen Him touch people. I've seen Him raise the dead. The dream of heaven came down to this earth. And now I see Him humiliated on the cross. But I remember what He said. My dream isn't over. I'm not going to stop dreaming because I know what He said. He says, in three days I'll rise. 
So I'll put, I'll, I'll give him my low place. And I'll let him raise and rise in the lowest place I got. And I'll give it to him on loan because he's coming out. Wouldn't you love it if the whole world knew that the greatest, the greatest miracle that God ever did, he did it when you were the most lowest. When you're down to nothing, God's always up to something. He's up to something this morning. We look at Joseph's life, Arimathea, and we say he's to be commended. His name means increase. He's got a low place. God comes from that low place. He says the dream is going to raise again. Yes, it was dead. Yes, it was buried. But it's going to resurrect in my low place. <laughs> he says, Jesus, you take my grave. You took my spot on the cross. Can you take my grave too? Have you ever stopped and looked at this? This guy was brilliant. God, you take, you, God, you take my busted job. You take my busted back. You take, God, you take, you take my busted marriage. God, you take my busted relationship. Cause you'll rise again. I may not, but you will. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll let you have it. How many of you know when you loan something, you loan it? Jesus is to be commended too. Can I just preach on that? Cause I'm almost done. I hope this will wet your whistle. You don't pay for something that you know you don't need more than three days. Well, that'd be a waste of money now, wouldn't it? Well, why, why would you go and pay for something that you don't need but three days? He said, I'll rise again. And in Romans tells us that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in me. Give him praise. <laughs> you know, you might be at the lowest point in your life this morning. You might be there. But it's not, the problem isn't what, it's who. Is Jesus there with you? You're busting out. You're busting out. This church is full of testimony. Some I can't go into. Some I won't because that's not the way it happens. There'll be things when we get to heaven. You know what? We're going to spend thousands of years in heaven because I believe that every time God puts on display another act of redemption where He took somebody at their lowest, He took a family at their lowest, He took somebody at the lowest of their health, the lowest of their marriage relationship, the lowest they were at their finances, and He did the most with them. And we're all going to go, glory be to God, glory be to God. Glory be to God. You don't like valleys, but let me tell you, that's where the devil gets his due. Because I read my Bible, and it says that in the end, there's going to be a battle called the Battle of Armageddon. And let me tell you where that happens. Not at a mountaintop. It happens in the Armon Valley. And the devil's going to get whooped there. Because that's where God brings the blessing. If you'll just keep dreaming, if you'll just keep holding on, you're coming out. I don't have a clue what you're going through. It's not my business. But I will tell you this. You've all had a Joseph season. And you might be in one right now. But listen. Listen. God was with him and he prospered. No matter if he was low or high. He'll do the same for you. The difference is faith. You gotta trust him. You gotta trust him. Just, just. I'm like the Fonz here. He didn't want to say sorry. Just trust him. Just trust him. This morning, it was just a few, uh, it was just a few weeks ago. Let me take my shoes off. Just a few weeks ago that, uh, I was sitting in my office. Oh, get over it. You act like my feet smell. Whatever. Just a few weeks ago, I was sitting in my office, and uh, a good man came into my office. 
He was hurt. His wife was there too. She was hurt. And that's all we're going to talk about. He's a good man. But.